Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and I have a video by request for you today. It is the Tree of Life pendants, and I showed these on my blog last week, and um, people seem to like them. I did put a written tutorial PDF uh, together. It's on my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com, but if you look at the bottom of the screen, then you can just click on it and download that. Um, so you don't need to be dashing around trying to write down notes while you're watching me do this today. Um, just print off the tutorial and you will be all set. So I made all kinds of trees. This isn't the tutorial we're going to do today. This is just a different kind of simpler one. But we're going to do the tutorial where we have um, the uh, the branches that kind of come out like that. See? All right. So I was using inch and a half key rings as my base for these. And um, I decided that I wanted something bigger. So I went to the store and I got some two inch key rings. So what you need for supplies today are some basic needle nose pliers and if you're new to beading I would recommend you get one of these three in one tools you've got um, your needle nose pliers at the end you've got this kind of flat mashy part in here and then you've got a side cutter so it's like three tools in one obviously that's why they call it a three in one and you also want to make sure you get one that's either got the little um, metal parts here that make it open on its own or that's got a little spring in there because it's a lot nicer to have pliers that open up on their own especially after an hour of beating you're going to be glad that you don't have to put your fingers in there and open it up each time it's a very good thing you're going to need some 24 gauge wire cut to um 16 inch lengths if you're doing the two inch tree of life you want them cut to 12 inch lengths if you're doing the one and a half inch one but I would recommend for a beginner to go with the bigger one it's going to be easier to work with you also need a variety of beads chip beads work wonderful for this let me just show you these they're very um organic and asymmetrical and um, made from natural stone so you get to have that nice actual natural semi-precious stone in your work and um then have a few smaller like seed beads and e-beads just to round it out a little bit because you will need some smaller beads as you go. Um, your first step is to fold each one of these wires. We have six of them at 26 inches long. Fold each one in half. Now I chose to use a key ring as my base but you could wrap a really um, stiff wire, a really strong wire like, um, like a galvanized steel or something, something that's not gonna warp out of shape on you around like a pill bottle and you could use that like maybe like a 16 gauge galvanized steel wire or something like that if you want um, but the key ring just certainly fits the bill for me and not very expensive these pack of two was 29 cents at the hardware store I don't know if I got a heck of a deal or if that's a typical price but that's what they were when I found them and then you want to grab your key ring and you'll notice that um, the split part here where it's thin that's like so you'd use it as an actual key ring you want to keep that to the top and you're going to be adding your wire at the bottom directly opposite so put the wire on so it bends and then you're going to wrap each tail around twice so you end up with four loops on your wire I'm wrapping that one uh, I'm actually wrapping one side four times because I kind of put it on not centered <laughs> so so that my tail ends will be about centered I'm going to slide my beadboard out of the way because I think it's going to be easier for you to see if I'm working just right on the white so let me move that right out of the way yeah I think that'll be a lot easier so you can see what I'm doing there we go. yeah that'll be easier so you do that for every single wire just put it on there my inframo we're cooking with fire today I've got the my project is actually in front of the camera that's that is something special. <laughs> All right, so we're wrapping each tail around twice. So we started off with six wires, but since we're wrapping them, folding them in half and wrapping them around twice, we actually are going to end up with twice as many wires. So we'll have 12 wires dangling off this thing when we're done. Now, when you're, uh, when you're starting on your bead making journey and your wire wrapping journey, because I know a lot of people that watch my videos are paper crafters um, that kind of want to mix it up a bit. Um, you a great wire to experiment with is copper wire this is copper wire that is silver colored it's about four dollars a spool um ac more seems to have a better price than joann's just to let you know it's very easy to bend and um, a spool has 40 yards in it so you can get a lot of good experimenting in there with it so it's a great wire to begin with it doesn't have any odd odor to it it's not going to tarnish um it's just a nice beginner um, wire that will behave for you <laughs> so I recommend getting that um, 
getting that copper wire. They, it comes in silver gold and it comes in copper colored, but that's actually hard to find because I think, well, I don't know, but I think it's just because um, that would be a pure copper and I'm sure this copper is mixed with something to make it reasonably priced because copper has gotten quite expensive uh, these last few years. So hopefully I haven't, oh, I've got one more wire to add over there. And it's a good idea to, if you want to have a fuller tree, you can add more wires. You want to just make sure you put on a multiple of three wires so that when we get to twisting the roots, we have, um, you'll have three wires to twist together. All right. So this, uh, this will take about an hour to make. And I'm going to be um, kind of skipping ahead. I have various pendants done in different stages, so you won't have to watch me do this for an hour. Um, but at least you will, but there's a lot of repetition, so you'll get to see how every step goes. So let me just make sure I have all my wires. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I do. Now another tool you'll want if you're going to do a lot of wire working are some nylon jaw pliers. This brand is Artistic Wire. Um, I have to say I wouldn't buy these again. I really don't care for their, um, their tools for one simple reason. There's no spring in here. I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to put my own spring in there, but that really makes a difference when you're working for a while, whether you get fatigued or not, um, using the tools. And also another reason I wouldn't buy these again is because these uh, the nylon pads get really beat up. They will no matter what brand you use. But uh, some brands will have a little uh, screw on the top so you can replace the nylon jaws. And uh, so next time I'll be saving up and getting a, a pair of pliers that I can replace the jaws when they get all beat up. So I'm just straightening out my wire here. If you don't have these, you can just glue, take a regular pair of pliers that you're not using and glue a little bit of leather on each side of the jaw and that will give you great pliers to work with. So, Or just put on a pair of gardening gloves and just kind of pull your fingers through. All right, so I'm just gonna move my wire so I have them all laying across my key ring like that. And then I'm gonna grab three wires at a time using my nylon jaw pliers. If you don't have nylon jaw pliers, you can use a pair of pliers that do not have teeth on them. You'd never want to use pliers that have like the little teeth, like your regular household pliers, um, because they will scratch your wire. So just find some with no teeth. Sometimes you can even find those at the hardware store. I've found some, you know, great mini pliers at the hardware store, which are great for jewelry making. So I'm grabbing three of these little strands and I'm going to grasp them about half an inch above the bottom of the ring and then I'm going to twist. I can either twist my pliers, twist the ring, or do a little bit of both. And that's going to give me my first root. I think I want a little bit longer. I'm going to twist it a little bit more. Okay, so let me show you that first root there. You see that? I'll give it a second to focus. Um, so we're going to do that all the way across, and we're going to end up with four roots, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. <laughs> Yay! My kids are doing, um, doing their three times tables in third grade, so... This is a, maybe I'll have them make some of these pendants. <laughs> I'm sure they prefer doing that than their regular math worksheets. All right, so we're going to twist our groups of three going all the way across. Now, you want to twist, if you're, if you're kind of unsure how much to twist, um, less is more because you don't really want to have to go and untwist after you've twisted them tightly. Otherwise, you're going to break them. They'll, they're going to snap. So I'm just going to do these last couple of groups, get them untangled from each other here. You can always twist a little bit more, and when you grab them with your pliers, it's just going to twist up to the tip of those pliers. So as long as you keep that in mind, you shouldn't really have a problem with it over twisting. I think I actually twisted four in one of those instead of three, but that's not really that big of a deal. We'll catch up. We'll catch up on the other, on the other end. Not a big deal. Don't untwist it. If you find you've twisted too many in one, just keep on trucking. It's not a big deal. If you're doing like a big, if you're working on a big ring, like making a sun catcher or something, you could um, use much more wire. Um, you could actually braid your groups of three together instead of twisting them. That's why you'd really need the group of threes if you, if you wanted to braid it. But um, for this, I'm just gonna, I'm just twisting. All right, and then you twist the whole group of wires together to make the trunk. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit closer. Now you want to pull out two wires on each side, like that, and you just want to take two wires that are close to each other. It's kind of hard to, I'm trying to hold this away from me so you see it on the camera, but it's hard to see <laughs> for me. All right, so I've pulled out my first two branches, and I'm going to give those a little twist. Now, the longer you twist it and you make that branch, the less full your tree is going to be, because your beads are going to start 
from the end of that twist. So my beads will start here, so it will be fairly full. If you wanted it less full, you could twist it up a little bit more. Or maybe you were running low on beads and you, uh, you were afraid you were going to run out. You can make your branches a little bit longer and just have the beads on the end. And now I'm going to twist these remaining wires together a little bit. But this is up to you. If you just want to start dividing them by two and twisting them, you can do that. But if you, um, if you want to kind of have your trunk go up a little bit further, you can twist a little bit like I just did. And again, you want to divide the remaining wires up by two, and that will create all of your branches. They'll get tangled up a little bit as you go, but that's not a big deal. You can untangle. You can untangle. You don't want to untwist. All right, so there I've divided them into groups of two. And I'm going to go back in with my... See, see how this is where it gets aggravating for me? Because I have to kind of either hang it and let it drop, or I have to kind of put my fingers in the middle and kind of open it like that, where if it, they were spring-loaded, I could just hang on to each side and they would open and close on me. So that, that will be either, either I'm going to make a spring and put it in there, that will be my first, uh, my first try before I go and buy new pliers, <laughs> or, or just buy a pair of spring-loaded nylon jaw pliers. But I want to save you the, uh, <laughs> the wasted money. I want you to buy the, the best one for your money first <laughs> and not have to you know, try a couple and figure out what you need. That's why I'm here. If you have a question, if you ever have a question on what type of tool to buy, leave me a comment or you, know, you can co contact me through my blog. It doesn't, or send me a message on YouTube if you don't want the whole world to know what you're asking. Because um, I'm certainly happy to help. I, don't, I want you know, people to get joy from their crafts and um, not worry about wasting supplies and buy the, the best stuff the first time. So this is what you end up with after you have divided all your branches. So now we're going to add some beads. So you want, I like to start on the, um, on the left side. It doesn't matter which side you start on, but start on one side and work your way around. That's the, that's the important thing. It's just going to be easier so you don't end up in between two tight wires up here um, for your last beads. You want to end up on one side or the other. All right, now I'm going to use some... I don't know why, why did I put that on my left hand side? I put my beads on my left hand side so I'll be reaching over myself. I'm just going to move this over here. So as you can see on my bead board, I have all my beads organized, um, just laid out so I can get to them. Actually, it might not be so bad if I leave it there now. You might be able to see, all right. Um, those are the various stages we're going to skip over to. So if I have my... Can you see that all right? <laughs> like you can answer me. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to grab some uh, rose quartz here. And the advantage of using the, um, the chip beads is that you get to experiment with some of my precious stones and precious stones without a big investment. So I'm just stringing on a few chip beads. I've got some green adventurine and I've got some uh, glass beads as well. The chip beads is a rock shop in Belfast I go to every summer and I always buy a strand of beads and I was feeling a little, a little guilty that I hadn't found, I hadn't realized anything I could do with these beautiful beads I've been collecting. And then a friend of mine recommended trying a Tree of Life pendant. And I thought, well, that, I didn't know what it looked like, but I could just kind of picture it in my mind's eye. And I thought, well, that's a great idea. I like the sound of that. So for this first, this first one that we're going to do, I'm going to slide that back. I think that's distracting, have that in the way. I'm just going to have it over to the side. Um, the first strand, you just want to bead up to the ring. You see that? And then you want to take your wire, and you can do this for the most part with your fingers, and you're just going to wrap this around. And try not to overlap your wraps. Try to keep your wraps just side by side. I'm just going to bring my hands up a little bit closer, and hopefully that will be in focus. I'm making no promises. I hope so. All right. Pay no attention to this. I'm going to have to squash some of those uh, those wayward wires down. I got a little sloppy there at the beginning. But that's a great thing about this project. It's not a very symmetrical project and it's very um, very forgiving if you have some sloppy beadwork, some sloppy wire work. All right, and then when you get to the end, you're going to need your pliers to help encourage that wire to go where you want it. So I'm just going to reach in there and wrap it around. And then when you get to about a quarter of an inch left, can you see that little quarter of an inch tail I have there? I've got it, got it with my pliers. I'm just going to curl that over. I know it's hard to see this 24 gauge wire. And then I'm going to wrap it around with my, kind of push it in with my fingers. Then I'm going to use the flat masher part of this plier to reach in there and really squish it in. That way it's not going to poke anybody that wears it. Because you, because nothing more irritating than having like a, a necklace that pokes you when you wear it. And I'm also, also going to get in there and I'm going to squash down some of these wires that are sticking out and driving me bonkers here. I don't have far to go before I'm bonkers, so better take care of that right off the bat. 
All right, so for the next, for all the other branches until you get to the last wire, you're gonna be adding on your beads. I'll just throw a few over here. Bead board, ah, don't need no stinking bead board. I don't need no stinking bead board. Who am I, the Queen of England? No, I can just, uh, I can just use my table. These beads won't roll away on you, which is nice. Now where's the hole? There we go. Ah, oh, warning about chip beads, um, especially the really small ones. They have a tendency to break, especially, so you want to kind of be careful when you put your beads up close to the edge that you're not putting the really fragile ones. I have some really tiny green ones, and I've broke quite a few making these pendants here. They're these right here. They're really small. And um, actually, they're kind of hard to see the holes too, <laughs> but they tend to break, so I can't, I don't want to wrap, do my wrapping with these. You'll see that in a minute because they will have a tendency to break on me. This is, they're just, it's just a tiny little part that's, you know, on the edge from between the hole and where the, where the edge of the bead is. All right, so now that I've gotten that first one out of the way, I'm going to wrap once and I'm going to put on some beads. Now I can use these, I can use these pink beads because they're really strong. They don't have a tendency to break. Or I can use these um, lovely kind of, this is kind of a neutral pink color e-bead. And then I just kind of hold it in place with my thumb as I make my next wrap so it doesn't go sliding around the back. And then I can now, I can add on some little seed beads. It's kind of hard for me to see this and talk and keep it away from my, keep my head out of the camera while I am, uh, while I'm doing this. So I apologize at the slowness. And this is a great way to use up um, any little beads you have, any leftover beads. Um, you know, just group up a bunch of a bunch of green bead soup and try it. It'd be really pretty. Oh, I don't want to use that one on the side because that's going to break on me. And then you could kind of pull your branches apart if you need to, to be able to um, get it through there. You know, some hanging over the edge. It's not a big deal. It'll just kind of make it look like a nice full tree. And then I try to wrap it as much as I can and not cut my wire, but um, but you do have little side cutters on your plier if you need to. I find that the 26, uh, I'm sorry, the 16 inch length of wire makes a perfect, is just perfect enough to fully wrap one of these two inch key rings without having to go in and add more wire at the end. All right, so you're gonna repeat that on each of these branches. Now when you get to the top, which my beads have kind of slid around on me, so I'm just going to slide it. So when I get to the top, to this middle part, that's where I'm going to want to have just some plain wire wrapping so I can attach a jump ring. So through the power of YouTube videos, I have one that is done to that point. So when you get to the top branch, um, which is my third group of two wires, I'm going to do the first one as usual. I'm just going to um, gonna thread on my beads. More riveting footage here. I'm awful clumsy. Awful clumsy looking when I'm doing my beating. <laughs> I'm sure you could find a better video on this uh, online. I'm some reputable crafter. <laughs> Not from the likes of me. And just throwing on side. I wish I took a uh, little sticky note or a little label or something and wrote um, the beads I had I was using here because I've noticed, I don't really know, I know that the green's adventuring and I have some jasper, not on this project, but I don't really know all the beads that I've been using on this on these these Tree of Life's and I think it would uh, help in my sales if I could tell the customer exactly what they were paying for. Um, so from now on when I buy beads I'm going to put them, um, I'm going to put a little note in my box where I store them so I don't lose track again. By the way this is the box that I store my stone beads and I think I've shown that to you before but I have all my chips in here by the type that they are so it's really easy when I want to do um, a stone project. I'd also throw my glass chips in there too if I was buying glass chip beads. Those are pretty easy to come by. Just keep on, keep on, keep it on, keep on adding those beads. All right, so this is the uh, the side of the branch that is not going to have the jump ring, which I'm getting dangerously close to filling into that area that I want to put my jump ring on. And you can adjust your branches as you go. I don't have to grab for my pliers till I get right to the end. And then when I get right on the end, I'm just going to curve over that little tail so that it's not going to pinch anybody. All right, so this next, this is where it gets a little different right here. Um, I'm going to put on my beads. 
you like you've seen me do millions of times what we're oh we're up at 19 minutes wow <laughs> we're at 19 minutes oh I'm, i apologize you've been watching this for that long you must really want to learn how to make this pendant um it takes a while to string on beads doesn't it especially for me for some reason um sometimes i bought some beads once this is kind of a funny story um they were cheap it was like 50 cents or something um online and I, um, I got them and they had no holes in them. They were just chips. They weren't chip beads. So I, I ended up making a cocktail ring with those. I'll sh I could show you that in a minute, maybe. Um, oh, anyways, so I got sidetracked. So on this one, you're going to bead up, but you're not going to add beads to the outside of the ring. What you're going to do, and this is where it's really thin here, where the key ring kind of where it splits, you're just going to wrap this wire across. Uh, you're just going to just wrap it tightly until you get to the other branch and that's just going to give you enough of a gap to be able to put a jump ring on and you don't want the gap to be too big because if you do you're going to look like you have a bald spot in the tree try not to overlap your wire try to keep it right next to uh next to the previous wrap um again again i should have reckon <laughs> i should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video you will probably want to watch this in full screen so you can see a little bit better detail All right, and I probably am going to end up cutting that a little bit. So with my side cutters, I'm going to cut it and leave about a quarter of an inch. So I have time, I have room to curve over the end and then tuck it in and smush it flat. And there I have room for a jump ring right in there. And then I'm going to continue beading these until I get to this last wire right here, just as I would normally. I'm going to put the beads on the wire, wrap, add a bead, wrap, add a bead for the rest of these, working to my... um working to my left. So that's that step right there. So when you've added all those beads, you're going to end up with something that looks like this, God willing. And uh, what you want to do is add on your, just a couple, actually, you can add on a couple beads, but I find that this side of the tree is a little bit fuller. This side of the tree is a little bit fuller than that side of the tree. So what I'm going to do is I am simply not going to add any, well, maybe I'll put a couple seed beads on there. What the heck? Why don't I do that? Why not? It won't be so so stark. I don't just want a plain wire there. Oh my gosh, honestly, beading, putting these little seed beads on when the bead wire is not right up to my face is very frustrating. Put one of these skinny little pink ones on there. All right, so what I'm going to do is sw um, smush that branch right up close to the last one I just did. I'm pushing it right up with my thumb, and then I'm going to closely wrap this remaining part of the key ring. So it matches what I have here over on this side. Remember what we did on the first branch? It's, it's going to match that. All right. So as you can see, these, I have gotten it so I can do one of these brooches, these pendants in about an hour, well, 40, 45 minutes to an hour. My first one, I think, took me over an hour. So a lot, that kind of time, when you begin, it's a great project to do. You're sitting down in front of the TV or listening to an audio book or something. Um, so there, there you have it. It's pretty, pretty easy to do. When you get to the last couple of rounds of wire, you can use your pliers to help get it around there. Try to push your, push your wire, try to pull your wire apart so you have a little room to work. When you get right to the end, we're going to do that same little curl over the tail and squash it and move. Curl over the tail and squash it in. That's what I call it. I got to patent that. I should trademark that. All right, so there, now we have our um, pendant all beaded. See, it looks like a tree. Let's move it up a little closer. There, very tree, tree-y, tree-y. There we go. All right, so now I want to add a jump ring. What I have here is an aluminum jump ring. I would say it's probably about eight millimeter. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm going to open it up. Aluminum's pretty easy, so I could just kind of twist one part with my finger and one with a plier. It's too big to use in my jump ring opener. And then I'm going to insert the... Uh, the pendant right there in that that skinny part that we um, that we kept for for uh, for that purpose. So I probably should grab another plier, but I think I may be able to hold it with my finger while I twist it with a plier. All right, there. Now I've got my jump jump ring attached, and I just want to add something simple because really I'm selling the pendant, and um, I'm not going to make a whole beaded necklace to go with it, or the price would be astronomical with that amount of time and materials. So to keep it inexpensive, but still have a necklace to sell, I'm going to find the end of this ribbon. Honestly, I will someday here. I just dyed all this ribbon because I, um, 
because I wanted to have just the right color for this pendant. Ah, there's the end right there. I'm going to cut about two feet of seam binding. That's about two feet, I'd say. And I am going to just thread it through my jump ring. I like to use ribbon, a simple treatment like this, uh, for a, um, whoop, missed it. I like to use a simple treatment like this because it really shows off the pendant and it doesn't really add an, ex an extra expense. So it makes it very sellable. So what I'm doing here is just a simple overhand knot at the end. And I just buy white seam binding and I dye it with my, um, with my spray inks that I made in a video last week. Works very well. And there we have it. It's pretty from both sides. That's the front side. Let's move this all out of the way here. And there it is from the front side. Let's zoom in there. Let's take a look at that crafty goodness all nice and, nice and close here. All right, I'll give it a second to focus in. It doesn't want to focus. Why don't you want to focus? Focus, will you? Okay, let's move it up a little bit closer. Can we see that? We are not focusing. I don't get it. Technical difficulties. I need one of those little things that come up like used to come up on TV when I was a kid. Excuse me, we're having technical difficulties. Anyway, there's the pendant. Oh, it looks like it's focused now. Um, front side, the back side looks pretty as well. There's my water pump, which tells me it's time to cut this video off. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.